I'm here with Dave from the Traditional Catholic Homestead and today Dave is going to show us around and give us the grand tour. Hi guys, I'm Dave, and this is the traditional Catholic homestead. Uh, we're up here in north central Idaho, um, about 4,100 feet, zone 6A. We have roughly a 90 day growing season here where we're at, so it's a little bit rough. You gotta be creative and you gotta figure out what works and what doesn't. We have 168 acres right here. Um, right here by the house we have eight acres, this is where our most intense, our zone one stuff is, right? And then uh, we have 160 acres of mixed timber and meadows where we graze our cattle and harvest timber this year. We've done a little bit of earthworks. We have a swale out over here. We have two swales that we put in. Those are, um, we've got some oak trees that we've, uh, we've planted in here. And then um, lilac, hazelnut, and sea berry that we got from Mark Shepard out of Restoration Agriculture fame. Um, then down below, uh, we've got another swale in there. So we got probably 300 feet of swales in here, collecting water, slowing it down, sinking it in. This area uh, drains a lot from uh, up above and it would make kind of a little creek through here. Uh, during the springtime, so we added those swales in there to kind of help deal with that water. And so for those that are watching that don't know what a swale is, basically it's a ditch on contour Correct. that's harvesting water and typically you would plant trees in the berm on the ditch Correct. and that water that's being captured in the ditch is feeding the trees. Yes. And sometimes you can use it to actually move water to a pond, that kind of thing, but uh, basically you're capturing water that would otherwise be running off your property and you're harvesting it for your own purposes. Correct. So this line right here is the swale and it's down slope so the water as it's washing down the hill will stop in this swale right here and the backside here is bermed up so it's going to capture that water and the water is going to sink into the soil and feed those trees. This is how we're managing our chickens for the winter time. Um, we run an open coop you know, closed in on three sides basically. A lot of air movement, a lot of all this stuff. And if you look at these guys, we've had, the lowest I've seen was negative eight, right? Out here. And there's not a speck or a spot of frostbite on anybody. Um, the key is keeping them dry and keeping them out of the wind. And that's what we get with this thing. Um, during the summertime, we run them out on pasture, kind of in a, a tractor following the cows. But during the wintertime, this is where they live. And it's pretty easy, you know. We don't need to keep them locked up inside. That's when people run into a lot of problems as because they, there's moisture. You trap moisture in there. You don't have a good airflow. Um, and that's what leads to the frostbite. That's what leads to the frostbite is the moisture. Um, you know, these guys are used to the weather. They, they have a down jacket on them naturally, and they just kind of, they deal with it. it. It works well. We throw them straw in there, and it gives them something to scratch around and play and do all their chicken stuff, but that's it. All right, so we got barred rocks. Um, well, we got some ducks. We got the uh, uh, khaki Campbells and Swedish blue ducks, just a couple of those. Um, there's some Americanas in there, little Rhode Island red. Um, not sure what that rooster is. He was just kind of a, a freebie. He's got a little bit different comb to him. Um, you got these banties. Those are my oldest boys. They're a millefleur banty. They're they got like a feather foot on them. Um, there's nesting boxes in here, and then you can access them from the outside here too. And we got some eggs that kids need to come in and pick up. But you know that's we got one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and a duck egg. Just from today? That's probably. I imagine somebody forgot to get their eggs, do their chores yesterday too. But that's no supplemental heat in the middle of winter, and 
Yeah. Plenty of production. Yep, that's enough. So these are uh, Hugo culture beds that we put in. Um, did that probably about three or four years ago now. Um, this one's got kind of a little, we made a, a frost pocket in here on purpose to get some uh, colder stuff, stuff that likes cold. And the Hugo culture is just logs underneath. <laughs> we, we got uh, logs in at the base, then we brought in dirt from a, they're actually from an old slash pile where they logged on the rest of the property earlier. So it was pretty rough dirt. Um, and it was dirt, it wasn't soil. It's been like sterilized because they had giant fires on top of it. Only thing growing in it was uh, thistles. And so we knocked the thistles over, scooped up the dirt, and then brought it in here. And um, it was pretty amazing. We never had a problem with thistles in this at all with the hugel culture. Um, we've got, there's, looks like yarrow growing in there. We've got um, just a lot of different kind of perennial type stuff in here. Uh, gooseberries, uh, strawberries, raspberries, um, some sage up on top where it's a little bit drier. This was the pig nursery when the babies came off of our cooney coonies. That's the ground level. <laughs> nice. So there's a little bit of snow in here. <laughs> or, um, yeah, this is pretty dusty. But um, these are all Hugo culture beds, wood core beds on the perimeter here. And then um, you know, we added the topsoil where we kind of dug all this out onto the top. This is all compost in here. We grew some uh, squash on it. It's less. This is our bedding from uh, two years ago in the milking shed. This is pretty neat. This has no supplemental heat in here and the coldest it's ever been is 14 degrees. And that's when it was like negative 18 outside. We just recovered this last year. Uh, this hoop structure with uh, a product called solar wrap and what it is is it's like giant bubble wrap sandwiched between two layers of uh, greenhouse film so you get an insulation layer in between it and uh, we've noticed a really big difference especially during the winter time this winter so these are our older pigs we picked them up uh, oh, they'll be two years old um, they're a Cooney Cooney cross. They're not papered or anything like that. And you can kind of see on this white guy, he's, that's the boar. If you get a good look at his face, he doesn't have that smashed face like this black one, black and white one does. So she's a lot more Cooney. And then uh, that other one's the guinea hog that we got from you. She's a year and a half old, but that black one is like a half a goat pig. That thing crawled up in those beds inside the uh, the greenhouse it, she would jump up like three feet she'd jump up on top of these uh, these big bales Wow yeah this is just whatever reason she doesn't like to stay put and it's pretty athletic this is a new structure we put up this uh, this winter actually I was a little bit busy this fall I would have liked to have it up then um, would have been working out a little bit better for us but um, this is a I think they called a motel from farm tech farm tech and it'll have uh, roll-up sides and end walls on it, but we got a little bit deep into the winter, so ground froze, we couldn't do much, but we got this, this part done. And the way we have this set up is as a rotating pins for, we got uh, some more pigs over on the other side, and then the dairy cows over on this side. And the pigs were in here just last week, and we switched them over, and then we have the milking stanchion milking area in the middle here. All right, and the cows only have access to that and then we have this area is kind of like a bedding area for the pigs And this is where we run them from one side to the other We'll pull that panel out and move it and what these are are uh, feeder panels that we get at the feed store They normally sit this way, all right, but we flip these ones over so that the pigs can run through So we bring the, the milk cow in here and load her up in the stanchion uh, we've got a squeeze bar on the side here, pull her tight. This is a walk-through stanchion so the, the head gate will swing out when we're done milking. And bring her back in. And here's where we got these little guys. And we're, we're going to do a uh, milking demonstration in the next video, right? Yes. Right. My wife will do that. I'm not the milkmaid, she is. Um, so here we got, uh, these are mangalitsas. These are purebred mangalitsas. Um, they're... 
going to be a year old in March. We're growing them slow. These are the little Cooney Cooney babies. They're, those, they're about two months old right now. And they were with their mom roaming the countryside eating whatever they wanted. So they're like junior baby goat pigs, but they're doing all right. And you can kind of see the difference between. We've got some of these ones that are really kind of cube shaped. There's a couple of them, and then a couple of them that are a little bit longer and leaner. But this is the work that we brought these pigs in for. If you look around, you see this was bedding just like the other side. And they've been in here for about three days, and they're going through this, and they're tearing it up, and they're, uh, you know, mixing everything, composting it all, um, adding extra heat into the bedding, and then turning this into soil. And the idea is during the summertime, we'll move the cows and everything out of here and we'll use this as a, a another growing area. Because we have that 90 day growing season, we need the protection. I like the mangalitsas and to be honest, the mangalitsas is what we were looking for when we started looking for pigs to bring out to the homestead. Um, they're a little bit bigger. They've been a heck of a lot easier to keep contained. You know, we had that one that likes to jump everything and climb stuff. It's just a weird pig, but, um, you know, they, they do really well. They're a little bit higher maintenance than the, than the Cooney Cooney, right? So they're a bigger, they're a bigger pig. You know, these guys are probably going to be half grown at this point. We're growing them slow. Um, they'll be twice that size. A couple of these that we're going to breed and a couple we're going to butcher. Um, but we're pretty excited about having the Mangalitsa out here. These are our milk cows. This is uh, Dory. She's the only one that's actually in milk right now. Uh, she's a nice A2, A2 jersey. Um, got her out of, uh, got her from some folks that were doing just grass fed dairy, all that. Um, this one over here we picked up last year. She's actually a reject from a commercial dairy. Uh, we haven't had any testing or anything done with her. That's Violet. Um, she just didn't quite produce enough for the for the commercial dairy, so we got that. She is Dory's calf from this year. Um, this is Muffin. He's a bottle baby. We had to pull him. He came to live with these guys. But Rose is Jersey and American Milking Devon. So we're, we're pretty excited about this one. A little bit more uh, higher quantity of milk than you get from the Milking Devon. But Sorry, a little I'm bit being easier. licked here. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. But <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. But you get a little bit easier to keep cow than the jerseys. If you look at them, they kind of, you know... Got a little bit of a hey. skeletonish look to them. Do I taste good? Is that what this is? I bet you taste better than I do. <laughs> and so she's a four-way cross. Oop. Watch it. Knucklehead. She's a four-way cross between British white. That's where she gets her coloring from. Those black points on her. Um, Jersey. Low line. Angus. And Dexter. So you kind of see that fence is about 30 inches high and so she's a shorty she's a little gal she's bred for milking um, she gives about two and a half gallons a day once a day milking um, so she she does pretty darn good especially for her size but she's kind of a neat story um, I had a steer just a regular black Angus steer that um, I was selling for grass finished beef and um, the buyers backed out on it and our friend was going to send her to the butcher to get her ground up because she couldn't get her to breed with AI. And, you know, I've got, I've got two bulls, so I figured what the heck, right? Um, we did a straight trade, and she's been with the bull. She cycled one time after she got here, and that's it. So, so you traded the steer for her. We traded the steer straight across for her, and it looks like it's going to work out pretty good. Otherwise, I would have got a pretty bad deal on that one but she's just cute as heck anyway, so.